Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we're gonna to talk about how your BMW actually works. So this is a 2021 M3 competition. I've had it for about eight months now. I got it on release date and I haven't really made a whole lot of content on this car and I figured we'll cover a topic today. On a recent video, you guys asked me to go over all the sensors in the engine bay on my 440i with the B58, but I figured it'd be a little more interesting for you guys to see it on the S58, on the G80 in particular. So why don't we do that today? I'm gonna pop this engine cover off. I'm gonna pop this strut tower off. And we're gonna look under the hood and point out each sensor and try to give you my understanding of what I think it does. I'm gonna pop off these 15 mil nuts. This front bolt's a 13. So I've had this car for eight months now. I put about 3,000 miles. A lot less than I normally would, but I've been working from home. I owe you guys a proper review on this car. What I can tell you so far is I've had no cravings for additional power, just as it is stock compared to my N54 making 550 wheel horsepower. So it should come as no surprise that the S58 looks very similar to the B58, especially from the valve cover design. So in my B58 valve cover gasket video, someone asked me if I could point out each individual sensor and talk about what it does and maybe give a bit of a technical background from my understanding as to how it functions. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna point to the sensor and then if any ideas come to mind with regards to how it works, I will go from there. And I could very well make a couple mistakes in what I point out. I'm well versed in these cars, but this engine is a little different as well. Starting right here, we have an electrical connector. And if you look in there, there's an electric motor, which bolts to the cylinder head. And if you notice, it's located where the intake cam would be. That would be part of the Valvetronic system. I talked about it briefly in another video, but that electric motor will spin a gear, which would adjust how much intake lift there would be for the valve, so you don't have to have a throttle body and the obstruction from it. Over here, we have a VR sensor or a variable reluctance sensor it's basically a magnet that has power going through it as it gets close to something that is made out of steel and voltage is passing through eventually you'll get to a point where the steel is closer to the magnet inside the sensor which will change the voltage coming out of the sensor and it will trigger information to the ECU. So you can consider that a camshaft position sensor. There's one over there, there's one over here. So they tell the ECU or DME what position the camshaft is at. As you can see, you'll have one for intake and one for exhaust. Over here, we have a pressure sensor to monitor how much boost pressure is being detected. As you can see, there's a line, vacuum line running into it. Over here, under this cover, you have the DME or the engine computer itself. And there's obviously a bunch of individual connectors going into it. This is another vacuum base line. Here you have your fuel line coming from your fuel tank. As you can see, it feeds over to the high pressure fuel pumps. Over here, I would imagine this is a temperature sensor to monitor intake temperature charge. It's probably a map sensor of sorts that is also primarily providing a temperature reference. Given this car doesn't have an intercooler, that would be your charge air cooler reservoir. So there's coolant in there. This would be your bleed line leading up to it. This would be your coolant hose that clicks right into the charge air cooler. So on the M cars, you can see the charge air cooler just exposed like that. And you'll see the intake manifold just bolts to it. It's out in the open. I believe they do that for cooling just to help it radiate into the engine bay versus being completely contained in the intake manifold as it would be on something like a B58. So basically that block there is your charge air cooler. Not a lot to talk about on this side of the engine bay. You have a vacuum line, you have your fuel line, you have your charger, coolant reservoir, and you have bleed line and all the wiring leading to the DME box and your air box, pretty simple over here. This is on the side of the engine bay to keep it away from heat. It's logical if you're gonna put your DME somewhere in the engine bay, keep it away from where the turbos are. I would say that's a reliability improvement from the earlier generation cars. Now this is a low compression engine. It's only in the nines, even though it's direct injection, but that helps it run about 25 PSI, no problem on regular 93 octane. Normally what you'd expect to see is a mass airflow sensor here to be able to monitor the air at partial throttle situations. If this was really high compression and really fuel efficient, you'd really want information with regards to how's the air coming in, and what's the velocity of air. This can't really do that. It's not gonna fine tune for light throttle and for super efficiency. It's designed for power given the compression ratio. So it doesn't have any mass airflow sensors. Very odd for a modern car, especially the compression ratio as well. This will, you'd be lucky to be in the low 20s in terms of an average in fuel economy, whereas a B58 would be in the 
the 30s. So for that reason, no mass airflow. You just have the dual map sensors over there, like the N54, old school in a way. Now over here, you have your coolant reservoir, and then you just have a level sensor. You have the bleed line going to the radiator, and you have your feed line coming over here. Nothing special. Now that fuel line over there comes all the way around, and it comes over here. What I see there is a harness, and I see a sensor screwed into the fuel line. So that would be your low pressure sensor, which is normally not required uh, unless you're trying to chase performance. So this, because it's an M car, I believe would have this, whereas newer non M cars wouldn't have a low pressure sensor. That information is inferred from other data. You have your two fuel pumps, which is odd. You would only see that if you're trying to chase big power. So each fuel pump feeds three injectors in the rail. Now you have your high pressure fuel pump, which is taking the low pressure over here, feeding it in, and then it's getting compressed because this is pushing up constantly by the camshaft based on RPM and nothing else. And it's compressing the fuel and creating high pressure. And then that gets fed out from here to feed your fuel injector line. And if you notice, there is an electrical connector here. This is going to pulse to vary how much compression can happen here to, and actually control how much the pressure would be leading to the fuel rail. Now you have another electrical connector, looks similar to the one back there, but this would be your high pressure fuel sensor. It's gonna monitor how much pressure there is at the rail. An interesting observation in terms of being able to determine if your fuel pump is potentially acting up. So two fuel pumps leading to two rails, only one high pressure sensor. On the B58, there was one fuel pump leading to two fuel lines to feed the two rails. Therefore, it can supply less fuel overall. And there's one sensor. But if the high pressure fuel pump is going, which would affect bank two, this sensor would tell it. But what could happen here is the first pump will be connected here and the second pump is connected here, but there's no electrical connector that I see that would tell the DME, hey, by the way, this one's failing. So it must use some other algorithm to maybe say there's a problem with this fuel pump. Just an interesting observation. Right over here, you have electrical connectors for the fuel injectors. Over here, you have a ground strap leading to all the ignition coils. These ignition coils are nothing special. They are run on all these models, the B58, B48, etc. So there's just an electrical connector there. These would be for oxygen sensors. And again, more oxygen sensors. If you look down in there, you'll see a gigantic heat shield to keep heat away from the electronic waste gates. There's two electronic waste gates, one for each turbo. So they don't wrap that in a turbo blanket anymore or a heat shield. They just use a gigantic heat shield, which will protect the pipes as well. But for what it's worth, that's an electrical connector for the electrical electronic wastegate. So in terms of a wiring harness that would make this engine run, from the top end, there's nothing really too fancy going on here. You just have your coils, you have your injectors, you have two fuel pumps, which would be you know, an M car thing. You have oxygen sensor connectors, high low pressure sensors. You have your map sensors and T-map. You have your coolant reservoir for the charge air cooler. You have your eccentric shaft motor for your valve tronic, but there's nothing too fancy with regards to how this runs. It really doesn't differ a lot um, compared to older. And technically there's less going on given there's no mass airflow sensor over here. So I got a lot of pushback when I claimed that emissions is causing these cars to be more reliable, but from a quality and tolerance standpoint, I believe so. That's a pretty difficult shot over there, but I'm pointing to the redundant throttle body that's in place in case your valve tronic acts up. So basically the compressed air comes off the turbos, joins together and comes up from the bottom into the bottom of that throttle body, which is open under normal circumstances, goes into the charge air cooler. Because it's an M car, it's open with space around it for heat to radiate out as it's going into the intake manifold. In terms of what else needs to be present to make this run, you're gonna have your vanal solenoids to control variable valve timing. They're gonna be up near the front here. Besides that, you have your crank sensor, which is gonna be telling the DME what the position of the crankshaft is at. As the crankshaft is rotating, it's gonna expect a certain amount of uh, revolutions or buildup and speed under certain throttle conditions. If there's a misfire and it's getting a stepped type of rotation, then it's gonna detect that as a misfire. Forgive the mess, but if you notice, there's teeth there. So on the block itself, there's gonna be the crankshaft position sensor, which is going to be interacting with the crankshaft as it spins. So as the sensor passes over one of these high spots or the teeth, it's gonna get a signal. And then there's gonna be no signal, signal, no signal, signal. Now, if I rotate this, there'll be a flat spot where there's no teeth. 
So imagine this is the crankshaft. This is the flat spot as it rotates. It's seeing, okay, well, let me count all these teeth. Okay, now I don't see any teeth. The, the DME gets no voltage. I've heard of these incorrectly being referred to as uh, Hall effect sensors. A Hall effect sensor will shoot light and there'll be a hole. And as it passes through the hole, it will, it will get no voltage. But this is actually getting inductance or it's getting magnetism. As this is rotating, these teeth, so to speak, are causing pulse going to the DME. Now, the only way the DME knows when one complete revolution has happened is when you get to that flat spot, which I showed you on the crankshaft. So that can tell it the position of the crankshaft at any given time, which we think is good enough information. Now, if it's rotating and then it's climbing really rapidly and all of a sudden it goes down a couple hundred RPM and you get like a choppy rotation, it considers that a misfire. If there's a misfire, then how does it tell you which cylinder it's on? What information can it use? You could run an engine just off this. They used to back in the day. So you would actually have a spray of fuel go behind your intake valves when they're closed and you'll have the spark plugs igniting when the exhaust valves are open. So they call that waste spark and batch firing. You're basically wasting efficiency. So they don't do that anymore. The reason you'd want a camshaft position sensor is to be able to pick up on the position of the camshaft. So you'll be able to tell, are you in the compression stroke are you in the exhaust stroke, intake stroke, etc.? So now, if the engine is spinning and it encounters a misfire, it will reference the camshaft position to be able to figure out which cylinder it is because it will be able to tell it if it's on the intake, exhaust, compression stroke, etc. So this will tell it the exact positioning of the valves based on talking to the camshaft. And then it won't fire the injectors unless there's a reason to, which is when the intake valves are open. And it won't run the spark plugs when the exhaust valves are open because that's just wasting energy for no reason. There's no fuel to burn. So that's why they have camshaft position sensors so that it can tell the DME what stroke you're on. And that's why you could take the information from here and the information from the crankshaft and figure out which cylinder was on its power stroke and which one could have been a misfire potentially. If you were to unplug these cam sensors, it wouldn't stall the engine probably. It would just run it differently because it can always use the crankshaft to at least keep things going. So from my perspective, is this engine super complicated compared to how things used to be? Sure. But compared to regular inline sixes, that are turbocharged? Not really. You have your valve trionic, you have your dual fuel pumps, which is kind of unique, and you have your electronic wastegates. This is a very efficient engine in terms of making power on 93 octane. It makes a lot of power without needing to run ethanol. It's not super complicated. You know, it, it doesn't overwhelm me to see these connectors. It's actually pretty simple. If you guys are enjoying this type of content, just let me know in the comments. I'll keep making it. My understanding is decent. The only reason I have a little bit of knowledge on this is because way back in the day, I made my E30 run on a standalone engine management and I had to figure everything out from scratch. I had to solder DCU and do everything myself. So is the S58 a technical masterpiece that just looks so different than any other inline turbocharged engine? No. The only thing that would even catch my eye nowadays would be seeing two fuel pumps instead of one. Do you really need that many fuel pumps just to make 500 horsepower? Definitely not. Can you make 750 crank without really going nuts on upgrading the fueling? Yeah, that's the reason. I'll tell you one thing, you don't get the itch to modify this car, just the way it's set up from the factory. It's very well sorted. I definitely owe you guys a proper review. Uh, I've had this car for a long time. I was intentionally trying to run it for many miles to be able to give you a really thorough review. My perspective will go all the way back to the original M3 because I've had two E30 M3s. You can feel the lineage. You know, I got this car on launch day and you know, nowadays there's a long wait for them. They seem to be pretty popular. You'd have to spend like mid nineties used to get a car like this right now because of the chip shortage. And a lot of people are going for these early ones because they're fully loaded. They, you can get things like the laser headlights and wireless charging and all the features. The newer models are getting decontented. The all wheel drive is being a popular option. I noticed that. All right, guys, that'll conclude this video showing you how this engine is operated electronically. I thought you guys would find it interesting. Some of you guys asked for it. So hopefully that gave you a slightly better understanding on how these engines run. I owe you guys a review on this car for sure. That should be coming pretty soon. If this is the first video you're catching on mine, please consider subscribing. If you liked it, please give it a like so it'll rank higher. Thanks for watching.